Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be a battle report between Kingdom of Aquitaine and Orcs and Goblins. Uh, it's part of the March ATC practice day here in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, I'm playing this list. So it's a list that we borrowed from a guy from the ETC team from Belgium. Um, it mostly focuses on two big blocks of Knights of the Quest that have a lot of heals in them because one of them is going to get the Folk Hero uh, with Cleric, um, that's uh, Wizard Apprentice on Divination, and the other is going to be the BSB that's also a Cleric. So they can both heal one wound per turn for free. Um, and otherwise, you have a block of Knights of the Realm with a Paladin with a Mortal Reminder. And you have the decent magic support to uh, to go with it, basically. Uh, the opponent for this game was going to be this Orcs and, well, this Goblins list. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of the archetype that is, uh, that is quite popular currently. Uh, so, you have just a decent magic phase, you have a lot of mad gits and a lot of netters, and then you have the, the, just the rabble that you need, basically. And then you, um, in this case, it has been backed up with Cave Trolls. Uh, cave Trolls are quite interesting, I would say. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a decent pick. I also played against the Goblin list with even more Mad Kids, uh, not a splatterer. And, and it's just, at some point, it just gets completely silly how much damage uh, comes out of them. Um, especially if you take all of the Headhunters as well that you can take, which this list unfortunately lacks but then again you cannot take everything right so this is um, this is the list that's gonna find the kingdom of Aquitaine. just before the game uh, we had a little bit of a chat about uh, about the matchup we both thought that it was uh, quite a decent matchup for the kingdom of Aquitaine, actually uh, because the knights of the quest they both can select a unit as far as we understand um oh well they Afterwards, we realized that you can only uh, select one unit because it's the first unit of Knights of the Quest that you put down that can select a unit type. And then you get Lethal Strike and Reroll to Wound against them. So the Cave Trolls will not be that much of a problem. And then, um, yeah, the rest of the list, it's just going to be a grind. And, and there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of diciness, basically, because of the, the armor rolls. But... Um, in the end, if the Kingdom of Aquitaine manages to grind out for a couple of turns, then the Goblins will not be able, likely, to uh, to pull through. This is a picture of the amazing Goblin army that I got to play against. Uh, within the back, the Trolls, uh, the two Splatterers on the sides, uh, the big units of Rabble, Nash Dashers, and, uh, well, basically everything that you, that you need for the army. So with that, let's get into the battle. So as you can see, the Bretonians or the Kingdom of Aquitaine have already moved up in this picture. Uh, I did drop for first turn uh, because I got the chance. And I thought that it would be quite a symmetrical deployment anyway. So on my opponent's side, it, the table itself is quite symmetrical. We talked a little bit about um, about which table side would be beneficial for either player. Um, and then my opponent gave me this side. Um, I did drop for first turn because basically the mobility of the night blocks is, is high enough to to be able to take advantage of it. And the levies are going to go in the middle anyway. Uh, hedge knights, they are going to have to uh, to go on the flank probably. So basically what happens is that I do a full advance with all of my uh, units. So the units that I have, I can zoom in a bit, but that might help a bit. Um, so here on the left side we have the Prince with Mortal Reminder, we have the units of Knights of the Realm, uh, we have a unit of Knights of the Quest with the Damsel and the BSB, yes. Then we have the uh, Friar's Lantern, Vassal Levies, <laughs> not Vassal Levies, but uh, Peasant Levies. Then we have the other unit with the uh, Apprentice on Divination, we have the uh, uh, Damsel on the Heraldic Steed. And we have the Hedge Knight. For my opponent, Nash Dashers, Trolls, uh, Goblin, Reavers, Pies, <laughs> uh, Splatterer, uh, Mage Bunker, Trolls, and Goblin Rabble. Splatterer and Nash Dashers on the flank. So I did advance a bit. Uh, I was planning to advance a bit further with the Hedge Knight. Um, but then my opponent's Nash Dashers, they have not advanced of 6, I believe. But, uh, 
the, this distance is, is a bit shorter than it seems. Like I, I was first putting them up a little bit closer, but then basically you get into the situation where if my opponent charges, then I would like to flee because there is still like a chance. If I'm like at 19 in or 15 inches, it's a nine on the dice. Uh, you don't really want to stick there because for my opponent, it's not a big investment to charge. And then uh, see if he makes it or not. And also if I am going to charge him, I need magic support to be able to strike first. So taking away the magic support from the main bulk of my army is not really worth it to, uh, to push up this unit. For the rest, I do push up uh, everything quite uh, aggressively um, my opponent can charge in onto the knight of the quest with the trolls um, however the, i whether that is really going to be the best option i don't think so uh, because if he charges in then uh, the knight of the quest will still strike first i think um, and they will do just a lot of damage it did cast a spell on one of the blocks that's awakened the beast i think for extra resilience so that i am a little bit more resilient resilient against the shooting and with that that's the end of the turn one for the kingdom of aquitaine we go to the goblins turn one so my opponent i think he did the smart play uh, of not charging in uh, but instead just blocking everything um i think it makes sense because like this, at the start of his turn, he can release them out kids, so he cannot release them um, right now, basically, in the in the previous picture. He could release them and try to go for a long uh, bomb on the Knights of the Quest. However, with Awakened the Beast with extra uh, um, resilience, it, it doesn't really help that much. Um, because any damage that he does is going to be mitigated by that, uh, that extra resilience as well. Uh, I will have my turn next, so I will heal a guy at least, and then I can with my magic maybe even fully heal my unit so it's it's not really the best situation because even half of the fanatics might not even make it into the the unit so i think it's a better play indeed to do this um for you that are paying attention he did make a unit of uh, his shahmans and his bsb uh, because i don't have any ranged pressure whatsoever um so he could also have random in in just separate units i think maybe um that's could be a little bit less vulnerable, but I'm, I'm not sure. Otherwise, he set up a trap, or well, he, he chaffed me with the uh, with the Reavers. And we did talk about it, that in this specific matchup, <laughs> it's quite okay to have the, uh, um, the Paladin with the Mortal Reminder because of the Terror. Uh, because these guys will be testing a Discipline 8 with a reroll from the VSB. There are chances that you will fail it. It's like 92% pass rate or something. But, but if you fail this, it's just a, it's a giveaway of the game, really. Uh, because then the Knights of the Realm can charge into the flank of the Trolls. Uh, you can uh, uh, engage them with the Levies as well if you want. Uh, you can engage the Knights of the Quest with the Goblins there. You can put the Hedge Knights and the other Goblins. And then the Knights of the Realm get to go into these guys, get an overrun into the Goblins, and then in the next unit of Goblins. Then basically you have cleared the entire enemy lines there. And also, uh, at the same time, you could then even declare the Knights of the Quest onto the, uh, the goblins here. So, <clears throat> for as 92% is, it's normally decent enough to, uh, to get some guarantees somewhere. In this case, relying on this for your entire plan uh, might be a bit tricky. We played it out and uh, he rolled the terror test and he actually failed. Uh, but since it was a practice day, we were like, okay, this doesn't make sense uh, to practice this like this. Um, because, well, if this uh, really happens, then it's basically GG, the game is over. And um, there's nothing really you can do, because then all your goblins are going to be engaged, you don't get any mad kits anymore. It's, it's just the end of the game. So we did continue playing um, with the uh, Reavers in the position that they were. Uh, so my turn, what I do is I do engage the rebel here on the right side. I do engage the uh, reavers with the uh, with the knights of the realm, I believe. I don't engage the trolls with the uh, uh, with the peasant levies because I don't think there's any use to that. And at my opponent's start of turn, he deploys some mad kids, I believe. 
he puts one through the Knights of the Quest, I think he does like two wounds or so. I still have my Awakened Beast from the last turn, uh, so I do get the extra resilience against that. Uh, but the Hedge Knights, they're going to be gone uh, because I move forward and I redeploy them uh, using Light Troops to hit two Mad Kids at the same time. Uh, and then the, mad, the Hedge Knights just get completely annihilated. Uh, mad Kids deal so much damage, it's it's not not okay. Uh, so basically the Kingdom of Aquitaine is down to uh, five units. Um, also having lost the Friar's Lantern in, in some way, I think to light shooting maybe, or to magic. It's not a very consequential piece in this matchup anyway, I think. Uh, we do get the engagement between the Knights of the Quest and the Goblins, and I do open up my flank to a juicy flank charge for my opponent. Uh, but I was like, well, I, I don't know how bad this is, uh, because, um, well, this turn my opponent will have AP2 with his spears. If he charges in, he's going to have AP1. It's a total of like 30 attacks, that's a lot of attacks, uh, but he will hit me on 4s, wound me on 5s or 6s, sixes. 6s sixes, I believe even, because of strength 2. Uh, so he doesn't wound that often, uh, except for the poison hits. It's going to be about 5 hits, so that's like 5 or 6 wounds in total, that's 1 or 2, probably 2 um, Knights of the Quest that are going to go down. Whereas, on my side, I do so much damage to him that... Um, I will rank up the combat rest. I might lose a little bit, um, but then magic can support me. Um, mostly the, the divination minimized discipline is, is quite important there. But um, yeah, we will see what will happen. So in the next picture, uh, my opponent did get the flank charge. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, on to the Knights of the Quest. Um, I think this is my turn again because I charged in. Um, so it stuck around here, uh, my opponent did charge the levy, so I stuck around, and this happened. Um, basically my opponent is out of units um, that are in the way for his uh, mage bunker. I do move up my uh, Pegasus quite aggressively just to be able to zone his characters and, and try to uh, get a charge off maybe. Uh, because still my Pegasus is, is stronger than his mages, and if I uh, can force him uh, to take a break test and it might give a very juicy result. Uh, here I do open up my flank to the trolls with the Knights of the Realm, um, but I am relying on the fact that I uh, can reform just to a white uh, formation, still the um, reasonable okay there, I think. I, I'm not sure, but um, I don't know how that's gonna go, to be honest. And otherwise we're just grinding down stuff. Mostly, this, this game now is mostly about the armor save uh, rolls. Uh, because if you fail like three armor save rolls on Knights of the Quest, and you lose three models, then it's it's the end of the combat. If you make all of them, then you're just going to stick around and grind out your opponent, really. Uh, so this is a bit later in the game again. I do clean up the goblins, they flee, they rally automatically. Um, I do get an overrun. I think is it this turn? No, it can't really be this turn. Don't think so. Uh, but anyway, later in the game, I do get a, a charge into his character bunker, um, and I do get to reform this uh, to to face the trolls. And uh, yeah, I, and this is actually a different unit. So the, I think what happened is that the goblins they broke. Uh, Goblins broke, then I overran into the characters and I reformed with these guys to face the trolls. And then here the goblins broke as well, um, but I got to, to face the other unit of goblins. Luckily my trolls managed, or the, the peasant levies managed to hold out against the trolls for a turn, so that the trolls didn't get free this turn, that was quite essential I would say. Um, and then as my opponent's turn, he charges in with the Nashers onto the flank of the Knights of the Realm, in with the trolls. Uh, just to see what would happen in this combat and uh, that's mostly it let's see what the next picture is so yeah that's this one um, so i have cleaned up the characters partially they break from combat they flee automat or they, they rally automatically the automatic rallying for auction goblin or for goblins i think it's it's a bit too much um but uh, like for example like these these the unit of three characters where you don't exactly managed to to kill them, they just flee away, there's, there's nothing to worry about. 
and um, you can't really catch them uh, unless you make the uh, the parachute and you <laughs> risk going into a unit like this. Whereas I also still needed my Knights of the Quest uh, in this combat. Um, so this is my turn again, I believe. Um, well, the trolls have gotten free. And otherwise we have the Knights of the Realm that stuck against the Nashers and the trolls, mostly because they remained steadfast, I believe. Um, also because like the, the charge of the Nasher dashes into the side of the Knights of the Realm didn't really give that much even, uh, because I think my opponent did one, maybe two wounds. I think one wound only. Um, and then he has a charge and a flank. He already had the charge, so he just has the flank and the wound. I do three wounds back, so actually the contribution of the, uh, the Nash and Dashes is... He does wear down my unit a bit, and it would have been an attack that otherwise would have gone to the trolls. So maybe I would have done a, a wound there as well, but that is quite unlikely. Um, I do get a charge with the Knights of the Quest into the side of the trolls. Uh, and yeah, these trolls are not going to do anything, probably, for the rest of the game due to stupidity. Um, so yeah, this is the board state, and it's it's not looking too bad for the, for the Kingdom of Aquitaine, to be honest. Um, I think I flew away with that guy. What else do we have? Yeah, so this is a bit later than Knights. These guys, they fled from something. Um, I think he did pass his, uh, his stupidity test. And then I fled away from him through the terrain. I'm quite uh, sure that I would be able to rally anyway. So I went through the terrain, lost some Knights. Then we have the Knights of the Quest still uh, in the middle of the board, basically. Here are the Knights of the Quest. They are getting... Uh, ground down by the different units there um, over time it, it's you just start losing knights and then it goes downhill and the magic i i don't rate druidism magic at all anymore because it's it's such an investment to get two guys back and the two guys they can really make a difference but once you get below a certain threshold then it's 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 rough because you have to really cast the, the race spells multiple times in order to uh, to get a decent unit again. I think that is the last picture of the game that I took. Um, yeah, so my opponent does have some ambushes here, I think. We played Breaking Flags, so then you get points for scoring units that you destroy, but also for breakthrough. So I did break through with two units. Uh, I destroyed some scoring units. My opponent did not, so I will get the objective. So that's going to be it for this game. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.